Hallelujah. Well, you know, um, wow. We just going to let God be God because I got a few things, but, you know, I don't know what's going to happen, but we're going to let it happen. Amen? Amen. Amen. But I tell you, I have just been stirred up since Friday night when God spoke about transition. And one thing we have to understand about transition is that when God transitions us, he prepares us for it. You know, he provides whatever we need in the midst of transition. We just have to continuously operate in faith. Then, Sunday, the word that Elder Charles spoke, both of them things just burned up in my spirit about making no provision for the flesh. When you transition, you got to be ready to transition and let things go. You don't want nothing to hold you back. Amen? Amen. Amen. So I'm just going to start out with 2 Corinthians uh, 5, verse 17. And that is a very familiar passage of Scripture. We all know, we all under, understand. At least I hope we should. Amen. But it says... 2 Corinthians 5.17 Therefore if any man be in Christ how many people do I have in Christ in here today? Lift your hands. Amen. He said he is a new creature. Mm. Old things are passed away. Behold all things, or is it some things? All, All things. things. All things are become new. <laughs> that word uh, creature, or some translations may say creation or whatever, always from a divine work. That is always, that new thing, that, that, that creature creation, is always speaking of a divine work, something that only God can do. Only God can do. So can no man get that glory from when you step into Christ. Because no man can say that Jesus is Lord unless it's by who? The Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. So can no man get no glory for this, for what God wants to do in you, in us, and through us. Amen? Amen. And that word new, it says, he is a new creature. I, I like this. New in quality, mm -hmm. fresh in development or opportunity, because has not was not found exactly like this before. In other words, again, can't nobody get no credit for it because it's something totally new. It's fresh from the very, almost like from the very beginning. It's not like somebody came in and remodeled you because. If somebody could come in and remind you, then you know they're going to want to take credit for it. But they can't nobody take credit for what God has, is doing in us. Amen? Amen? Amen. Why? Because it's from a divine nature. Amen? Amen? Amen. So we have to understand that. That when we are in Christ, we are new. Old things have passed away. Sometimes it's hard to let go of some of them, them old things. But you can't carry the old into the new. It just ain't gonna work. What it says, the old wine cannot go into the new wine skins. Amen. Why? Because it'll burst. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen. Hey, oh, what it say? New wine. I'm sorry, it can't go into old wine skins. I'm sorry, or oh, it will burst. Mm -hmm. Turn with me to I, um, Isaiah 43. got to say man Isaiah 43 verse 18 again another very familiar passage of scripture and it reads remember not the former things neither consider the things of old 
See, when you are new in Christ, you don't need to worry about the old things. Remember not the former things. And you know what? What that is talking about, it says, do not even confess or, take e or even take thought to what used to be or even how you used to be, what you used to do. See, one of the tactics of the enemy is to always try to remind you of your past. Try to remind you of who you were. Try to remind you of what you did. And I like how some of the old folk would say, well, baby, when the devil reminds you of your past, you remind him of his future. Somebody say amen. amen. All right, all right, that's what I'm talking about. So it says, remember ye not the former things, neither consider the things of old. Behold, I will do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth. Shall ye not know it? I will even make a road in the wilderness and rivers in a desert. In other words, what God is saying, what I'm getting ready to do with you, ain't never been done before. This is a new thing. I'm going to make, when they said that it couldn't be done, I'm going to show them it can be done. Because when I get through with this, people are going to say, how in the world didn't they used to? And, and last time I saw them, they was doing this, they was doing that in the yard. But God says, I'm doing a new thing, and I'm going to make a way for them in the wilderness. In other words, I'm going to make preparation for them. Amen. I'm going to provide for them when they said it couldn't be done. Mm -hmm. See, you know, it's like you come out in the desert, for example. Sierra Vista. Wow. <laughs> if this ain't a wilderness, then I don't know what it is. <laughs> but how many of you know? God has a way in Sierra Vista. God has prepared a road in Sierra Vista for each and everybody here. Under the sound of my voice, I don't care what you've been through. I don't care what you did. If you're here rooted and planted right here, God has made a way for you. Amen. He has made a way and will continue to make a way. You just got to continue to believe what God is doing in your life. Get out of the way and allow God to be God. Amen. Amen. See, when you allow God to be God, then God can do some things. Amen. See, God don't need our help. Nope. I mean, last time I checked, I mean, I ain't never seen no man walk up to a river and say, and it parted. <laughs> and I ain't seen nobody blow on, the drown, blow on the ground and cause the ground in between the water to become dry. So God don't need our help. All he needs us to do is get out of the way and allow him to do what he needs to do with us. All we got to do is just trust and believe in him. So he says, don't even consider them old things. I'm making a way in the wilderness. And rivers in the, ah, rivers, plural, in the desert. When they said, no, nope, there is no provision, God says, I'm going to make rivers in the desert. See, can't no man get this glory but God. Mm -hmm. So number one, we've seen, okay, we are all new creations in Christ Jesus. Mm -hmm. Remember not the old things, the former things. You know, the problem with remembering old things, it's like the children of Israel, every time, they ran into a little adversity. The first thing that came out their mouth was, well, when we were in Egypt. <laughs> so no. When they, when, 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 when they got a little bit of friction, <clears throat> the first thing they said, now when we were in Egypt, we ate good on Friday nights. We had fish that just didn't run out. We, there you go, Friday night fish fry. <laughs> All you can eat. <laughs> but they seem to have forgotten about the beatings that they had to endure. <laughs> Saturday morning, when they didn't get up on time, the taskmasters was there ready to, you know, crack that whip. Amen. But every time they a little fresh. Now understand this now. Imagine this. Here you are. We're in Egypt. Okay. Moses comes back. He's ready to deliver the people. They go through all these ten plagues. Now you, you, you witnessing this. You seeing how mighty God is just moving and preserving his people. 
Okay. Then you prepare to leave out of Egypt, out of bondage. Mm -hmm. Now, they, when they left, they left loaded because they gave over some of the gold, some of the silver, and some of their stuff. And they left and went out into the wilderness. Okay, all right. So then all of a sudden, Pharaoh's heart gets hardened. All right. So they come after. So God provides for them uh, uh, a cloud by, was it a cloud by day and a pillow of fire by night? Mm -hmm. Okay. God is doing this, right? You right there. You witnessing this, right? God has your back, right? Okay. Good. All right. So now they get to the Red Sea. They still doing a little bit of wine. All right. So we know what happened. Boom. Everything parts. The ground is dry. They go through and they turn around and they see Pharaoh and the army coming. And what happens? Whoosh. They watch what was oppressing them for 400 and some years completely washed away. And they got their stuff. So they came out loaded. God delivered them and they get into the wilderness and all God wanted to do, he wanted to be their God. But when they came across adversity, oh, I remember Egypt. When we were in Egypt, why did this man Moses bring us out of Egypt into this land of the wilderness to die? But yet God did all these mighty works. And see, that's the danger of remembering the former things. That we used to have this saying, and I'm sure y'all may have had the saying where you all are from, but St. Louis, you say, you know, you can take the person, and we didn't use the word person, we used another word, and I'm not going to say that word. But you can take the person out of the hood. <laughs> But you can't get the hood out of the person. Ah. See, you can get the person out of Egypt. But can you get Egypt out of the person? You see, that was one of the, one of the biggest things with, um, when slavery ended. They were free from slavery. But could they get the mentality out of them? Mm -hmm. Because they were still walking around like they were oppressed. When you are in Christ, you are not oppressed. The enemy wants you to think. But when you remember those former things and you start meditating, it's like, what do the words say? Put your hand to the plow. Jesus said, any man that puts his hands to the plow and looks back is not worthy of the kingdom. So you know what happens when you put your hands to the plow and you start feeling a little friction? Oh, ah. You start looking back and remember, man, when I was over there, I didn't have to deal with this. <coughs> okay, I'm, I'm all right now. Oh, wow. You know, man, when I was back over there, Everything seemed to be cool. But yet, you still don't realize all the hell you had to go through. All you're thinking about is the good. Man, okay, a little more friction. You look back and then eventually, what takes over is that, let me go back over here. It feels a little bit more comfortable over here. Yeah, that's a little better. But you know what you fail to realize? See, when God, brings you out of something, he wants to take you to a better place. Amen. See, he wants to take you higher. But when we look back and say, man, you know, it sure was good back there. Hmm. Hanging out with the fellas or, you know, ladies hanging out with the girls. You know, we was getting it in and whatnot, had a good time. But yet, what you don't realize, what God was bringing you out of, was the fact. Now, think about this. God brings you out, okay? We try to go back. But yet, you didn't realize what the enemy was setting you up for. Because you could have been, you go back, you could be hanging out with the girls, and all of a sudden, y'all get caught up in a situation, and some things transpire. Mm -hmm. and you're like, wow. So when God brings you out, allow God to bring you out and continue to walk forward in what God has ordained for you. You know, it says, trust in the Lord with all of your heart. 
That means everything. Your mind, your will, your emotions, everything. Trust in the Lord with all of your heart and lean not on your understanding, but acknowledge Him in what? And what? All your, all, your ways. all your way. Everything. Acknowledge Him. And He shall direct your path. Y'all heard me say this before. That one of the meanings of that word path is talks about childbearing. So the vision, the plan, the purpose that God has placed inside of you for you to birth and to bring forth, He'll show you how to raise that child. He'll show you how to raise that vision. And it says, do not be wise in thy own eyes. And it shall be health to thy bones. It shall cause you to grow. That's the danger of looking back. Because you think it was good, but you don't realize what the enemy was setting you up for. You don't realize, thinking about Ray Ray and Pookie and, you know, <laughs> oh, I'm just so in love with Pookie. <laughs> Y'all just don't know how Pookie treated me. <laughs> Fellas, man, Shaquisha, man, <laughs> everything. <laughs> Man, you know, but, but you just don't realize when God said, okay, time to go, time to move forward. You got to let Pookie and Shaquaja and Riri and, 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 you know, Ray Ray and all of them, you got to let them go. Because you, you have no idea what the enemy was setting you up for, but God is trying to move you forward and take you forth. I mean, no, God knows the beginning from the end. Amen. He is the author and the finisher of our faith. Amen. amen. Can you say amen? amen? Amen. Amen. I hope this is helping somebody. Amen. So it says, don't even consider, you know, don't even, don't even gaze or, or, or give, uh, don't even try to discern. Just let it go. Don't even consider it. Because I'm doing a new thing. Again, something that's fresh, something that ain't never been done before. What God wants to do in each and every one of you under the sound of my voice is something that ain't never been done before. Because God created you to do that. He created you for that special plan and purpose. I know the thoughts that I have for you. Thoughts of good, not of evil. To give you an expected end. Is that right? <coughs> to give you an expected end. You're going to have adversity. Jesus said in John 16, 33, it says, These things I have spoken to you, that in me you may, you may have peace. Why? Because you have a choice. But, he said, you will. You will have tribulation. You will. Understand that? Understand what you will means? That means it's going to happen. Now see, my thing is, if you're not experiencing a little adversity in your Christian walk, then I'm going to wonder, what are you doing? Mm -hmm. Are you really who you are? Who you say you are? Or are you perpetrating? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, I, I'm just asking. I mean, Jesus experienced all kind of tribulation. When the, the Bible says that after he had fasted for 40 days, he was led by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of Satan. Forty days of fasting. And the first thing the enemy did was tack his flesh about eating. Because he knew he was hungry. And he couldn't get him there, so he said, okay, let me show you all these kingdoms, everything that belongs to me. Look and see how good this is, and I can give it all to you. Whoever you want, whatever you want, I can do it. He said, no. Nah. You follow what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Amen. So a little adversity. Turn with me to 1 Peter chapter 4. Acts 
Actually, go, go to Philippians. I'm sorry. Go to Philippians. Philippians chapter 3. I like how uh, the Apostle Paul put this to the people at uh, Philippi. Verse 13. It says, Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing, it says, I do forgetting. Now, that word forgetting, properly to overlook and neglect. I'm overlooking and I'm neglecting those things which are behind. Because again, if you're looking behind, you're going to miss what's in front of you. Because you walk in and you're looking and you, know, you eventually stir off course. And boom. <laughs> you know. So he says, I do forget it. I'm neglecting those things which are behind and reaching forth, which means to lay hold of what is divinely acceptable, the full impact of his resurrection. In other words, I want to know what God has for me. Amen. See, if I'm in him and I'm resurrected in him, then I want to know the full impact of it. And the only way you're going to know the full impact of it is if you keep your eyes focused on the front and not look to the rear. Letting go of those former things, not remembering the former things and how it used to be and what it was. You know, if I mean seriously, think about it. God is not going to bring you somewhere and leave you and fail you. He's not that kind of God. That's not the kind of God we serve. God wants to get you in an uncomfortable place. He wants to get you out of complacency so you can trust Him. So you can rely on him. So you can exercise those faith muscles. Mm -hmm. That's what God, he wants to get you in an uncomfortable spot, in an unfamiliar territory. And when I came here 16 and a half years ago, I was like, oh my gosh. <laughs> I left Air was Air Force Base, and I'm like, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm all excited. Yeah, whoa, God. God's going to provide for me because, you know, I'm stepping out in faith. You know, I was at the halfway point in my Air Force career. I, you know, and, and we'll make it so bad. My NCOIC was trying to get me to stay in. He said, go ahead and extend. I was like, well, if I extend, then I might as well just do eight more and just go ahead and retire. I'm like, nope, I'm doing the will of God. I'm getting out. I'm going to share with Mr. Earl. <laughs> God told me, I'm going to do this thing. God's going to provide a job for me. I know all that got here and did nothing go the way I thought it was going to be. <laughs> and whoo, you talking about flesh. <laughs> Mad, upset. You know, like, come on, Lord, really? It was very uncomfortable here. Very uncomfortable. But I had to walk it out. And that's how God wants. He wants you to walk. He wants you to trust him. He wants you to put your eyes on him. He wants you to stay focused on him. If God called you to it, he going to bring you through it. God is not going to put himself in a situation to make himself look bad. Where people are like, ah, that's your God you serve? Really? God is not that kind of God. We don't serve that kind of God. God is here to give you an expected end. He said, I've created you unto good works. Not to leave you high and dry. Trust. Trust in the Lord. We're gonna, oh, okay, okay, here we go. Back at uh, Philippians. It says, I do forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forward to those things which are ahead, which are in front of me. I press to earnestly desire to overtake. I press towards the goal for the prize of the upper call of God in Christ. He's talking about your destiny. Paul said, I'm determined to apprehend this thing. You know, 
to be apprehended is, 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 is a term that, that um, uh, the police use. You know, it's like, you know, if, if, if I go up to that gate right there in the morning and I didn't know Interpol, and I'm like, look, man, I'm getting on this base. What, what else? That might not go over too well. I'm going to be surrounded and, 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 and you know, Elder Paul here has his gun on his hip. So, um, you know, y'all better watch out. Y'all go to that gate. Elder Paul has his gun on his, on his hip. And, you know, when I drive up to the gate, sometimes at the gate, that brother be like this. Yes. Yes. Well, listen to Elder Paul. He got that gun, plus he got that taser, too. He's like this. Like, what's up, Doc? Make sure I show him my, my, my cat cards. So he don't apprehend me. You know, like this, he might, you know, snatch my little short self out of the car. <laughs> and, and, and apprehend me. And see, so the Apostle Paul says, I want to apprehend this thing. In other words, I want my destiny. I'm up against the wall, destiny. I want you. You're mine. My plan. The purpose that God has ordained for me to have, I want it. Yes. How many of you truly want the things that God has ordained for you? Yes. If you truly want it, it's yours. Go for it. Don't let no one person, no devil in hell, tell you you cannot have what God has ordained and established for you. Amen. The only person that can stop you, you from filling that plan is the one you see in the mirror every morning. Mm. You. That's good. That's it. Wow. That's it. Nobody. Nobody. No devil in hell can stop you. The only authority that the devil has in your life it's what you give them. Amen. It's what you give them. When he was in the garden, all he did was just sit there and watch her. Okay, she checking that tree out. <laughs> hmm. Right. That tree look good, don't it? Mm -hmm. I said, that tree looks good. <laughs> make you wise. Did God say? Did He say that if you eat of it, you like him or something? You know, when you eat it, you'll just be like him. But she's already like God. You know, she's already created in this image and mm -hmm. his likeness. Go ahead and eat it. That's good. Matter of fact, let me eat Conversations when, 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 when y'all was young in school, you know, mama called about 3 30, 4 o'clock. Don't eat nothing else, I'll be home to cook dinner. And he realized mama didn't count all them cookies in that cookie jar. <laughs> and somehow one that came up missing, who had the cookie? I don't know. <laughs> Breath be smelling all like chocolate chips. <laughs> you just. <laughs> I mean, you know, <laughs> I am kind of speaking from experience, you know. <laughs> I, I was, I, I, I'll tell y'all this when we cut the film off. I can tell y'all. <laughs> we ain't gonna put this on film. <laughs> anyway, so the thing is. Don't let your past try to dictate what you need to do. Your past is just that. Your past. God brought you out of your past mm -hmm. to give you that respect to the end. If God wanted 
Ray Way and Shaquasia and Pookie to be with you, he would have bought them with you. He would have, he would have said, look, I need all y'all to go together. But he didn't. They cannot be a part of what God is doing in your life. You know why? Because they're going to be a hindrance. Y'all heard my story, how I was mad and upset with God just a few years ago. And I was hanging out, doing what Johnny wanted to do, getting it in. But when I came to my senses, and I said, okay, Lord, this is it right here. If this ain't real here, I'm done for real. Okay? And all of a sudden, just like I started getting a little bit closer, a little bit closer, yeah. so it tastes a little bit better. I'm like, okay, okay, maybe this is, this is what I've been looking for. I got a hold of it. I said, all right, I'm in, Lord. I'm back. I'm in. I'm in. And you know what? It's not that I did not like the people that I used to hang out with. When I saw them, I spoke with them, but I couldn't put myself in that situation to be around what was going on. I couldn't do it because God did not bring them with me for my plan and my purpose. So I couldn't go back and just hang. So you got you know what you have to be you have to be smart you have to know 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 your enemy mm -hmm. see if you know you uh, got a problem with cartoons <laughs> you know I'm I'm just saying you know what no I'll be real here okay can can I can I talk about me mm -hmm. Amen. I'm I'm gonna be real. Now, back in my day, when I was, you know, young, getting it in and all that stuff, you know, in my teens and, and twenties and whatnot, I wasn't out fighting. Number one, I thought I looked too good. And I didn't want nobody hit me in my face. You know? No, 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 I'm serious. I you know, I was a little pretty boy. At least I thought I was. My thing was chasing skirts. That was me. I, is it all right if I'll be real? Mm -hmm. Okay, that's what I did. I chased skirts. I made all kinds of stupid goals and dumb stuff. But that was me. So the enemy know that. So, I'm not going to put myself in a situation by going to some rump shaker contest. You just, you have to be smart. Yeah. Not that, it, 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 I'm just being honest. Mm -hmm. See, the enemy cannot, he, he, he cannot tempt me with drugs because I've never had a drug problem. I just, I never had it. Right. <clears throat> never had it. But a hormone problem, yes. <laughs> I'm just being real. Mm -hmm. So guess what? I'm not going to put myself in a hormonal situation. Amen. That's just being smart. Because I want to look forward. I want to apprehend what God has for me. So I'm not going to allow nobody to come and tag along, you know, or, or, or run into, you know, Betty Boo and, 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 and all the other ones and mm -mm. get away. Karate kick them. Get away from me. And move forward. That's real. That's being real. You cannot put yourself in a situation that you know you've been delivered from. You can't do it. You can't do it. You got to be smart. You got to have the mind of Christ over that thing. Amen? Amen. 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 I hope this helps somebody. Okay. Yes, it is. Talking about, um, okay, pressing towards that goal. All right. Facing adversity. Again, Jesus said, in me, you, you may have peace because it's a choice. He does not force himself upon us. It's a choice. Everything we need to be successful in Christ has been given to us. And if you're not sure where it is, all you got to do is pick this up and ask. Oh. Holy Spirit, where is it at in here? Yeah. Call up one of your brothers and sisters. 
Where, where is it at in here? Whatever you need to succeed in your Christian walk is right in here. God ain't playing hide and seek. He ain't playing whoop, pick -a If you want it, he'll show it to you. It says, draw nigh unto me, and I will draw nigh unto you. It also says, therefore, submit yourself to God. So first it has to be some submission going on. Submitting to God, then you can resist the devil and he will flee. See, if you're not submitting to God, you ain't resisting no devil. The devil ain't going nowhere. <coughs> See, when you do part A, then part B is automatic. When you do part A of drawing nigh unto him, then part B is automatic, baby. It's going to happen. Because the more you go after God, the more he's going to come after you. The more you want a God, the more he's going to give you. The less of God you want, he's not going to force himself on you. He's not. But if you want and you draw nigh, he's going to draw nigh to you. Amen? Amen. Amen. And then we'll be talking about adversity. Turn with me to uh, 1 Peter 4. Word 
the more strange things going to come your way to try to uproot you. As long as the enemy know that you are a threat to his kingdom, he's going to come after you. If you just playing church, showing up, going home, doing whatever you want to do, living the old kind of way, he ain't going to waste his time. I wouldn't. If I was a devil, I could waste my time. I don't waste my time on Paul. Paul ain't doing it. He's just sitting back there, him hauling around. Oh boy, let me try to go mess with Rashida. <laughs> He's been studying that word. Been faithful to God. Let's see what we can do over here. Let me come over here and mess with her. <laughs> let me come right in her home. Let me set up camp and see what we can do. Mm. Mm. That's why. Remember the seven sons of Skeba? They, they, I think they called them uh, vagabonds or whatever they were. All they, they were just going to and fro, from whatever felt good from one day to the next. All they was doing is going by what they heard. But they wouldn't do his other word. And all of a sudden, here come this devil. Well, I adjure you in the name of Jesus that Paul preached. In the name of Jesus, Jesus preached. The devil said, Something not right with this picture. Now, Paul we know. Jesus we know. But, I have a problem with recognizing your authority because you have no authority. You are trying to operate in somebody else's authority. You ain't spend time with the Lord. You don't look like him. When we look at Paul, we see Jesus. When we see Jesus, we know that's Jesus. But you? Uh, no. We know the rest of the story. Amen? Amen? I don't know how I got on that. We're talking about that adversity. We're going to fill a bit of adversity. Okay. Uh, as though some strange thing happened unto you, and then verse 13 says, but rejoice to the extent that you partake of Christ's suffering, that when his glory is revealed, you may also be glad with an exceeding joy. In other words, when the, when the revelation of this thing, what you went through, when God reveals that thing to you, why you had to go through what you had to go through, it's going to make you so high. It says exceeding joy. When you're going to be jumping up and down. Yes, yes. Thank you, Lord. I give you praise. I give you glory. And you know what that does for somebody else that comes on? That allows you to minister to somebody else to show you. You can get through this. You can get through it. I, I know what you're feeling. I know what you're going through. But you can't get Let me tell you the goodness of Lord. Let me share with you what he did for me. God is no respect of person. What he did for me, he's going to do for you. Amen. 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 <laughs> I'm almost done. Amen. We'll go to uh, Isaiah 55. No, 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 Let's go to uh, 1 Corinthians. Let, let me share this one thing before we... Get here. Remember Israel, they wanted to have a king to judge them. They wanted so bad. <coughs> and Samuel had a conversation with God. And God told him, Now you tell them. They had this king. This is what's going to happen. I think it's in 1 Samuel chapter 8. Read it. They said, this is going to happen. Da, 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 da. And after everything was said and done, they said, yep, we want this king. We want him. Okay. I want to be your king, but you want a king? Okay. I'm going to give you the, the desires of your little heart, your little lustful desires. You have this king. Okay. 
So we know uh, Samuel spoke to uh, Saul and said, look, go down, and I think it was, was it Amalek or Amalekites? He told him to go down and wipe them out. Amen. Utterly destroy it. The old, the young, uh, infants, everything had to go. The oxen, the animals, everything, just get rid of everything. Kill them all. Don't leave nothing, don't spare nothing. So Samuel, I mean, Saul goes down with his own little interpretation of what he thought God wanted him to do and whatnot. And so he did it. He spared Agag and, and, and some of the best of the, you know, the, the, the animals, the sheep, oxen and whatnot. And then Samuel showed up. He told me, hey, I did what God told me to do. And he said, why are you lying? What is this? I'm hearing all these oxen is bleeping in my ears of sheep, oxen, and so forth and so on. Well, the people did. They took the best of it. And God, I mean, and, and Samuel told him, say, you know what? God has snatched the kingdom from you. I'm taking it away from you. And so Samuel goes on. And then I, it's, uh, I believe it's uh, 1 Samuel 15, verse 1. When you get time, just go back and read it. And so Samuel was actually like, kind of like mourning a boo over the fact that God has snatched the kingdom from Saul. And God said, why are you crying over what I have rejected? What I have gotten rid of, why? So the question is, why do we seek after those things that God has taken us away from? Why do we keep trying to go back to those things? Why do we keep trying to uproot ourselves? out of a place where you know God has placed you to be in. But you keep looking back at each other. And he's brought you out. Why do you keep looking back at all the people you used to hang out with? And he's delivered you from them. Let go. <coughs> let God. Let go. And let God. 1 Corinthians 2 9 says, I has not seen, nor ear heard, nor have entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for those who love him. Do you realize what God has prepared for you? We're talking about the perfect plan of God for your life. Consider not the form of things. Remember them not. The things of old. They're old. God is trying to put new in your hands. Mm -hmm. This is a time of transition. Not only for the church, but for us as individuals. God wants to put new stuff into your possession. He wants to increase your wisdom, your knowledge, your understanding of who he is. He wants to increase that revelation inside of you. This is the God in whom we serve. Again, no eye has seen, no ear has heard, has it entered into the heart of man will God wants to do for his people. Let go and let God. Amen. And receive what God has for you. Amen. 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 Give all that praise. Amen. Encourage yourself with that. God has given you an expected end. Read Ephesians 2:10. Jeremiah, is it 29, verse 11? I think it is. Let me look it up real quick. Let me look it up real quick. Make sure I give y'all the right passage here. Glasses on. 29-11. Yep. For I know the thoughts that I think towards you, says the Lord. Thoughts of peace and not of evil. To give you a future and a hope. Then you will call upon me and go and pray to me. And I will listen to you. And you will seek me and find me when you search me with all your heart. God wants to give it to you. 
Are you willing to go after the heart of God? Are you willing to let go of the former things, the way things used to be? Are you ready to just read all of that so that you can receive what God has for you? Apprehend your destiny. Go after it. Don't let nothing stop you. Amen? Amen. 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 Come on, give the Lord a hand praise.